welcome to Pepper Shop Media's Marketing Expedition Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in marketing and advertising. Now, here's your host, Ray Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen, and I'm the founder of the Marketing Expedition community, as well as a co-founder of Pepper Shock Media. And today, I have a special treat for us. We have Natalie Lemus, and she is the host of The Journey, the only daily live mindset coaching membership on the internet. She teaches ambitious people how to become masters at manifestation, and through her techniques, she's reached a net worth of almost $10 million in seven years. Wow, that's awesome. She believes everyone deserves to live their life by design, and she's committed to showing people how to make that happen. Welcome to the show, Natalie. Yay! Thank you so much. I'm excited to be, to be chatting. And I just, we were talking offline a little bit how I got to come to your office and work with your team pre-COVID. I mean, like right when COVID was happening, we were like, should we do it? Should we cancel it? And I'm so glad we did. <laughs> we had a, such yeah. a good time. I we know. Did a CEO we did. swap, right? <laughs> that was so fun. I had never done a CEO swap. It was kind of like one of those TV shows where you yeah. swap. And um, yeah, I got to go out to Pepper Shock, which is awesome. And then Ray came and did some some really cool stuff with our team. We had a little little culture camp. Yes, we did and had uh, some fun things. We got to, to decide uh, if they were going to be an animal, what animal they would be. And, it, and then we, I don't know, we, we did all kinds of fun culture things. <laughs> so Natalie, tell me more because you, you've kind of lived two worlds really. You're, you're the CEO of a property management company real estate, commercial development company, and then now you've started and done this this other really cool thing. So just kind of sh share with me your path, like where you got, how you got to where you are now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to do the shortest version that I can. <laughs> so in 2012, I moved back to Boise. I was living in um, Santa Clara, California, and I really wanted to join my parents' company. So that was my first really desire. Uh, I was a millennial little brat. I'll just say it <laughs> because I was working a retail job. I was the manager of um, these different departments of, of Macy's and did not like the hours, did not like the schedule. Um, actually, I loved leading a team. I loved growing and leading a team and hiring people and working towards a goal. All of that I loved, but I wanted more of a traditional, you know, Monday through Friday schedule. And then I also thought I need to learn from my parents. Like they obviously have done something right with their lives. So yes. I want to go and I want to learn. So I joined in 2012 and you know, it was pretty, pretty crazy because I just jumped right in. I'm a very type of person that I, I am very inquisitive and curious and I would ask, well, why do we do it this way? And how about that? And is there a reason for this? And so I probably drove my mom crazy. My dad had already been retired and within 18 months, of working in our company, my mom started to experience some pretty intense health stuff. So she right. came to me. Um, she came to me and Greg, who Greg had been with us, darn, I don't know, the math thing for like 12 years at that time and, and worked really hand in hand with my mom. And she said, guys, you're in charge. And she's like, Natalie, you know, you like the people part of it. So you can be, you know, the CEO uh, and Greg, you're the numbers. So you're the CFO. And you had to have been like early twenties at this point. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I think I <laughs> wow. was 26. Okay. I'll have to go back and like, I always get it wrong. And my team's like, you need to figure this out. Was it 24 or 26? I don't know. But <laughs> Mid twenties. Let's just go with that. Right. Mid yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I remember feeling at that time, cause our team was obviously everybody was older than me. Um, and we had around 10 employees at that time. Um, and most of our revenue came from my mom selling commercial real estate. Now that's a challenge when the person that is selling is deriving most of the revenue, 70% came from that. And then they walk out, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you know, it was this big gap and we still had employees and overhead. And I remember going to my car and I cried and I was like, oh. I felt like I didn't want to let my mom down. I, 
I just felt a lot of pressure. And, um, but as we do in entrepreneurship, I call it FSO, figure shit out. (laughs) Yeah. So true. So true. So true. So I had to just figure shit out. And I had my mom as a mentor. I, I talked to her almost every day. I'm like, I'd call her with the silliest, smallest decisions. And then eventually now she, she just told me about a few months ago, she goes, you never call me anymore for advice. Oh, <laughs> I, like, I know. I go, I was oh. that too, and how proud I was of myself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, and I know I, I've had the pleasure of meeting your mom before, you know, yeah. when, when she was still working and doing the things she does. And so I absolutely can see where, you know, <laughs> she would have a wonderful uh, world of advice to give you. Right. <laughs> so true. So true. <laughs> so I had to FSO figure shit out. And I decided to hire a coach. I, of course, I had my mom and I could call her and things, but I needed an outside voice. And so along with that, I had a vision and my vision was I wanted to be retired in two years. And I know this sounds insane, but you know, that's a mid twenties person for you. So I was like, in two years, I just want to be retired and I want to be spending. And my definition of retired was spending 80% of my time doing coaching, training, speaking, retreat, right. and 20% of my time really running, leading the business. Mm-hmm. And I knew that in order to get there, I needed something called reoccurring revenue. I couldn't be relying on myself to do brokerage deals. Mm-hmm. You know, and to, to the dismay of my parents and people around me, they're like, you can make so much more money doing brokerage. And I had to stay true to my vision. My vision was to create reoccurring revenue so mm-hmm. that I could basically leverage myself out of the selling part mm-hmm. of being a CEO. So, you know, so it, it took, you know, it didn't take two years. It took around seven years. And then I began, began traveling around the entire United States as a coach for Keller Williams. Mm-hmm. And I, I was able, I was the youngest coach coach traveling and doing all the Keller Williams sales and marketing. Uh, well, it wasn't marketing, but sales seminars and, you know, training rooms of, of real estate agents, hundreds of them. And it was awesome until I was like, wait, this wasn't really my actual vision. Hmm. So I had to kind of like reevaluate. It was an amazing experience. I learned a ton. And then, and then that's really when I took the leap into, my own company. And yeah. now I coach people one-on-one and then the daily thing that you talked about in my bio. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So, okay. When you talk about becoming the master of manifestation, tell me more. What, what are you, what do you mean by that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So to me, manifestation is The only thing that it is, is making your dreams a reality. That's it. So there's tons of ways to do that. Um, Obviously hard work, you know, and putting in the work, but not necessarily hard work in the way that we might think. It's doing the right things at the right time with the right energy. That's what makes things pop off. Staying clear to your vision. I think that's definitely a part of it. Letting go of baggage, limiting beliefs, old stories, old constructs of, you know, I mean, I wanted the fascinating thing about my kind of story is that I wanted to be a coach, a speaker, right? That was my desire. But in order to step into that, I literally had to become almost like a new person because I was so afraid to be seen to be ridiculed, to be humiliated, to be judged, to be seen as not enough, not worthy, not competent. I was just carrying so much baggage. It was insane. And, um, I did specifically one, um, very like, uh, what do I want to call it? Like a very well researched technique. And it's what Tony Robbins uses in all of his breakthrough sessions and things like that. And I had this breakthrough session in 2019 and it changed my life. And then eventually like I got certified in how to do it. And now I do it with my clients. And so I think that manifesting really comes down to letting go baggage, staying clear in your vision, and then making the right, taking the right steps towards where you want to go. And that's what I help people do. 
And one time I got to see you speak and you talked about the ideal scenario. Do you want to share a little bit more about what that means? Sure. So, you know, one of the things that I stresses me out a lot is this concept of the big why. Like, and it's so, I don't know, it just doesn't resonate with me because I never understood, well, how can I have one big why? And like, is my big why good enough? Is it big enough? And, and it would also freak me out because, you know, they say they, whoever they is, all the gurus out there, right. they're like, oh, well, if you, if you're procrastinating and if you're not getting after your goals, it means that your big why isn't big enough. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Ah. You heard that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all, it doesn't always start with why it can't always start with why. Right? I get no. it. <laughs> so for me, I was really like thinking about this concept and I'm like, well, what is it? Like what has gotten me like up and going every day and with the energy to go out and get after it and make cold calls and talk to 70 year old men who love you out there if you're listening to this podcast uh, and you know and sell them our our products and our services not products but our services for mm -hmm. property management and and just to be so young and to be like just doing all the things that I never thought that I could do honestly and cold calls right I mean who loves cold calls I don't know it's it's, it's a definitely an acquired taste to be able to do it and love it. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't love it. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but I knew I had to because I mean, you can't. You're not going to meet like a multi-million dollar apartment owner at a at a networking. You know, you've got to yeah. call them, and they're usually like retired and sitting on their yacht somewhere. You know, so I had to <laughs> yeah. find them. They weren't going to be finding me. You know, right? So, anyways. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of where I started to come up with this concept of ideal scenario, and it just mm -hmm. is really, okay, what is it that you really want, you know, in all aspects of your life? Because I think a lot of times we pigeonhole ourselves, you know, and the interesting thing with, with coronavirus and everything that's going on is people are really reevaluating, right? They're like, yeah. oh my gosh, I could do school from home. I could homeschool. I could work from home. I could start a business based at, mm -hmm. based and out of my home. I could close my business. Maybe I want to travel more. Maybe, and I mean by travel more like RV because I've seen right. a lot of people. I've seen people yeah. sell stuff and buy an RV and they're like, we're just going to take our kids around the U.S. this year, you know? Right. So, you know, what is it that you really want? Like, what is the ideal scenario for your life? Like, how do you want to live each day and what do you want it to look like? And I think that's one of the biggest blessings as being an entrepreneur is you can define that. Well, anyone can define that. It's just a matter of willing, being willing to walk out the path. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, and thinking about all of the different aspects in your, in what, what it is that your ideal scenario is, right? Like if you're going to volunteer or if you're going to, you know, if you do get to travel, like you said, and, and what you can then, you know, save and spend your money on and, and, and you know, manifest that to make it what you want it to be, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So I want to know a little bit more about you and what inspires you and what makes you, what is your ideal scenario? What is my ideal scenario? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So my ideal scenario is, okay, it looks like a lot of jet setting. So <laughs> <laughs> what do I mean by that? I mean like having, and it's interesting because people have asked me like, well, has coronavirus changed your ideal scenario? Are you... No, absolutely not. Like, I believe that things will shift, change, like work themselves out. I'm not worried about it. Like, I know that life goes on and things unfold. So my ideal scenario is going to different locations, like beautiful locations, um, and doing seminars, conferences. So we just did one in McCall. Um, with 70 people and that's for a nonprofit. So it's hundred percent free, but, but my ideal scenario is I'm spending time with, and, and my crew or the people that, that are on my team are like a family to me. And, um, and I'm doing this with my husband, Ugo and with our babies and we have tutors that travel with us and, you know, and we're doing these seminars and, and conferences in Latin America and all over the U S and, you know, ultimately I'd love to buy a ranch. I know it sounds crazy, yeah, but, good. um, a ranch, I want property like along a waterfront. So mm -hmm. could be like, well, I want one in front of the, 
one in front mm-hmm. of the ocean in Puerto Vallarta mm-hmm. and we just bought a, a condo there. So we have, we have that, but it's not the ideal scenario, but it's very like yeah. on the path. Well, it's, 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 it's on the path, right? It's going to get That's awesome. Benefit. Yeah, yeah, we're so excited about it. And then another one would be, you know, in, I wouldn't even call the Treasure Valley, like Star or Weezer or Melba or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Um, and, you know, I want well water and uh, someone that loves gardening can just like make a garden there if you want. Like, I, I really want to continue to build a community of people that share the same vision and want to like make it happen. So yeah. Very cool. that's, that's where we're at. And I mean, it's, it's happening. It's so, so cool because I mean, I've had people come to the retreats and seminars and stuff for decades, like literally one of the gals, this, I think this was her 12th year. Oh, wow, man. I'm going to have to come. I'm going to have to find my way to this, this, uh, <laughs> this thing that you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that well, sounds I, amazing. I, I've never done one for pay. Wow. I've only ever done it for free. So wow. maybe an opportunity for you. There's another thing that you could add into your scenario is to get paid oh. to do what you do. <laughs> oh, well that's, that is the ideal scenario. How do yeah, you think right. you're going to pay for the jet? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it all, we'll see how it all transpires. But, um, yeah, this last, this last retreat felt really like you know, things were really starting to, to move more in that direction. Cause we had like a real stage and lights and like, it was just so much more professional than we had ever done. It was really fun. So you said it was for your nonprofit. Tell me about your nonprofit. So it's basically a personal growth and development, um, experience for 18 to 25 year olds. That's completely free. And we host it every year in McCall and yeah. It's, it's for anyone who wants to gain clarity about their ideal scenario, what they really love, what they don't love, where they want to, you know, move their energy and passion. And, um, I just got a message the other day because sometimes the breakthrough happens, you know, you kind of start to see it there and then Mm -hmm. it's like all of a sudden it just kind of hits you. So she DM'd me and she goes, you know, my whole life I thought I wanted to be a doctor, but then from the retreat, I had all this clarity, like, I don't want that. My number one value is family. And she's like, I want to be a mom and I don't want to be in debt. And I want to spend a lot of time with my kids. I want a lot of kids. And she's like, and so I'm switching my major and I might drop out and start a business. Like, oh, and she said, I feel so excited about it, you know? Wow. wow. That's pretty cool. I mean, well, yeah, there was always the dropping out of school. Oh no. But then Becoming a business owner. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that too. Good. Mm-hmm. So who have been some of your helpers along the way? You mentioned your mom, but you also, um, you know, people who've mentored you, people who've coached you or, you know, people who've impacted you or have been uh, good support systems for you and just helped guide you and, and, and grow you. Well, of course, my parents, they are awesome. And one of the things that they taught me was there's always a lot of room at the top. That was like the phrase of our family. And so I, that translated to me that, Oh, if there's a lot of room at the top, there must be room for me. Like it was as simple as that when I was a kid. Uh, The other person is my husband. He like hands down has changed my life. Like in so many ways, cause we got married. I think I was really young when I got married. Um, I think, I, I do know I was 24, so <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I was really lost and stuff and, and, and just, I was like partied way too much and it was just, I never thought I was going to get married, uh, ever. I never wanted to get married, nothing. And so meeting him, it's just been such a beautiful journey and he teaches me things all the time. I always tell him he's super wise. Uh-huh. Um, so my husband, and then I would say, you know, my coach now is Tony Robbins son, Jarek, and he is also so, so wise. Um, and so he just, you know, talks me off at the ledge, <laughs> all of our coaching. I'm like, I just want to go to the beach and have a coconut stand. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that what you really want? No, things are just hard. I just want to escape. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
And he, you know, the biggest thing that he taught me, you'd think it would be business, but as a high achiever and as somebody that is very ambitious and goal driven, I tended to always put my family last, like, oh, just one more email. Oh, just one more this. Oh, oh, I'll be home in 30 minutes. Oh, sorry. It was an hour and a half or, oh, I had this or whatever. So Mm -hmm. through coaching with Jarek over the last, I mean, I think we've been coaching, it'll be a year in February. Uh, You know, he just plants seeds so softly and by his own example, I just began to really open my eyes to a lot of things that I was kind of doing unconsciously. And through Corona, one of the most beautiful things happened. I started going to work between 1130 and noon and working out with Ugo in the morning and being around with Tino and stuff. So Mm -hmm. I mean, and that is like a radical change for me. And I was like, will I, will I get everything done? (laughs) And now Maybe it's, it's more productive because you get it done and you're just focused on getting it done so that you can have time to do other things, right? Yeah. And it's just Good. made me really think about, ev- like really think about mm-hmm. every single thing I say yes to because the calendar is half of the size that it used to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely when you are uh, working from home and have kids in school, that, that, that for me, that's been one thing that's really changed too is... Now I'm scheduling everything around their schedules instead, you know, and, and sometimes it's battle of the broad, uh, broadband, right? When they're going live and I'm going live. And so <laughs> it's just crazy, but it's, it's good battle though, because yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. <laughs> so what are some accomplishments that you are super proud of? Gosh, well, if you would have asked me this like a few weeks ago, I would not have answered this way, but I've recently had like a breakthrough being, being a mom. Like I never thought I didn't know if I wanted kids. Like again, like my Enneagram, I'm a three, if that means anything, but like just very, very goal driven and ambitious. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of like, you know, watch out world here. I come thing, like don't get in my way. Right. And I had a really difficult, uh, time just postpartum my experience just to crap ton of anxiety and I a lot of self-doubt and stuff and where I'm at where I'm at with Tino our son now is just it's just so awesome and so that's probably one of my biggest is just mothering without baggage mm, good and and he just started school right for for yeah. first time he's a kindergartner oh, right preschool preschool preschool, preschool. okay I is, gotcha. oh my gosh I'm like I want to install a camera and I just want to watch him all day <laughs> <laughs> like those dog cams, you know, but I want them for my son. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So that's probably one. And then if I had to give you another one, I would say, I would just say like peace. I don't know how to describe that because, you know, two years ago, 2018, mm-hmm. I just experienced so much anxiety all the time about what you know, am I doing enough as a mom? Am I doing enough with our clients? Am I doing enough for our team? Um, what do, what do people think about me? Um, am I enough? Are our clients like literally at constant, I'd be like, oh, we're going to get fired. Like, not that we did anything wrong, but it was just this constant anxiety of like, well, if we mess up as this, like I'm going to lose it. And if we lose this, then, then I'm left to fire people. And then I'll let people down. And I mean, it was just constant. And I've just done a lot of work over the last two years on my own personal growth and development and spirituality and, Mm -hmm. and connection with my creator. And I literally can tell you that I have experienced peace. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. It changed my life. So I'm like, and I look at pictures of myself from even last year to now. And I'm like, Whoa, girl, you are a different freaking person. But you know, self-growth work works. And I didn't know it was working at the time because it didn't feel like it. But so if anyone's listening, keep going. (laughs) Yeah, right. I'm proud of you for that. That's, that's really awesome. I'm glad to see that that's happening for you and that you're going and getting to where you feel really good and peaceful. That's, that's Mm -hmm. nice, especially during this COVID crazy time, right? I mean, if you can manage that and do that, you are, you know, one step ahead. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I mean, I think that all the work that I had been and am doing on my own, like 
connection and spirituality and all of that really made it so that this didn't, I mean, I had like one day and then I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty much just going to decide that I have the victory over this experience mm-hmm. and that's it. And never look back. <laughs> Make the most of it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So what are some tools that you use in your business to, I'm going to steer us towards marketing again, since this is the marketing expedition and we're going on a journey here. Tell me about some things that you do, some marketing tactics and tools that you use, things that you found highly successful in in marketing your business. Ooh, okay. That's fun. Um, Let's see. So I'm going to talk about coaching first. Okay. So for coaching, I think the biggest thing that I've found that, that works is, well, there's numerous, right? Let, let me rewind a touch. So <laughs> a lot of people say like, what's your niche? You know, what's your niche? Like, do you like, what is your niche Nat? And you know, in the beginning I was like, Oh, I think it's real estate agents. Cause that's kind of the field I came from. And then I was like, you know, I think it's entrepreneurs that want to get out from running their day to day and want to grow a team under them. And then, and then it was like, okay, um, maybe it's people that want more like life coaching, but they also own a business. Mm-hmm. What, what I found to be really shocking was that this is my aha. Okay. And I don't know. I don't know if you agree with this or not. Maybe you'll just tell me. I actually don't believe that we can create our own niche. Like, I don't think that I can say, Oh, my niche is fill in the blank. I think that we explore kind of like marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We explore who resonates with our message. And then those people become our niche. I that agree. Yes, yeah, that, that is. I mean, cause you, you can then attract the right people who, that are like-minded that you can, you know, identify with the audience that you're wanting to resonate with most. And then those are the people that are going to come around you. Right. Yeah. So I think, I think it's like, you've got to try on a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did and found to be successful in, you know, narrowing down my niche was speaking. So I would Mm -hmm. speak to a lot of different audiences. I spoke to your networking Mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I spoke to Keller Williams. I spoke to uh, another women's networking group. I spoke to Women Council of Realtors, the the San Francisco Council of Realtors, like lots of different groups. And what would happen was, you know, there'd be inevitably like one or two people would come up, you know, maybe more, sometimes no one, and talk to me about my story or whatever they would resonate and it wasn't until you're gonna just like be like what it wasn't until last week that I had because I've been on calls and I've spoken to groups of like 150 200 Mm -hmm. and I would maybe get two maybe four followers or people dm want to consult want to talk more about coaching whatever until until I spoke at a an MLM um, women's, well, sorry, it's not women, but majority of people there were women, um, shampoo, Monate. Oh, wow. Okay. So there were 350 people on the call, 220 of them followed me. Nice. Hey, there's your niche for for at least for that. That's awesome. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Like, Do they have dry shampoo, by the way? (laughs) They probably do. No, I don't know. I don't know what they it's have. It's a COVID but thing to do for, for sure. <laughs> I know. Too. That's amazing. So, so oh. those, that, that's one area you can focus on that you know if people are going to resonate with you, then yeah. Yeah, that's but it. I think if I would have been like, oh, people aren't really resonating, like, oh, I shouldn't speak anymore, you know, then I would have lost opportunity to really get to know who's resonating with my message. Right. So I think we got to keep on trying on like all the hats, mm-hmm. you know, and really see what sticks. I, right. I think at least that's yeah. just been my experience. Well, that's a successful moment for you. And then now you can attract more like that, that, uh, you know, if it's women or if it's it, because it is an MLM or if it's, you know, because of the, the way you were able to deliver your message. I mean, there's probably a lot of different factors, but it seems probably. like that would be good to replicate what's working for you. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The other thing um, are asking for shout outs on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I've asked just in people's DMs and I've just said, hey, if you resonate with my content um, and you, I mean, I've noticed you've been liking my stuff, would you please share it on your story and tell people to follow me for coaching and business and mindset? 
and they do. And then I get followers from that and then people get exposed and then they'll DM me and be like, Hey, tell me more about what you offer or mm-hmm. whatever. So that's, that's one tactical. Um, another one is, I just call it saturation. Um, just emailing with items of value. And then I'm going the more on the real estate side now, you know, like what do investors, our clients, what do they really want to know? What are, What is keeping them up at night? What questions mm-hmm. do they have that I can answer, that our company could answer? And then sending those out in emails. And from those, you know, I've, I've gotten people to respond and, and then they see you as an authority and as cre- having credibility and they want mm-hmm. to know, oh, tell me about your product. Or, hey, I have a need and it looks like you guys are in this realm. You know, so, mm-hmm. you know, well, I think education marketing is like huge. Right. Very helpful. Well, and when you do those speaking engagements, that helps because then, yeah, they follow you and then they can continue to get your content later. And then even if they're not going to resonate with you right away or not going to act on it right away down the road, they do. I mean, I've seen that happen where I've spoke at an event and two years later, somebody, Hey, you know, I, I heard you at that Boise chamber event, or I heard you wherever. And then suddenly now it's like, Oh, okay. It's finally, you know, coming to fruition that somebody heard what I had to say and now it's, you know, helpful to them, right? The seed was planted two years ago. That's right. (laughs) Excellent. Um, Okay, so who is your ideal client then? Have you, I mean, you just decided that that maybe like we've got that, but who is it that you like to work with most? So for one-on-one coaching, which is what I mainly do. And then I have a, once a year, I launch a mastermind and we launched it right at the beginning of COVID. It was crazy. (laughs) Um, but the, the business owners in that group, like one of them made more in four months than she did the entire 2019 during COVID. Um, Yeah. Uh, Another one was the, the record setter in her, in her market center for real estate sales. And, and I work with people all over the U S that's the cool part is I get to talk all over. I love that. So, um, my ideal client is somebody that's making between a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars, uh, and wants to basically make seven figures uh, in the one-on-one or mastermind. That's mm-hmm. that's who those are more targeted for. But then I'm a really big believer in what I call accessible coaching because I think something that annoys me about coaching is like, Oh, well you can't get it until you're already successful. So then what's the point, you know, Mm. because it costs a lot of money, right? Like, you know, my packages start at a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's not really like available for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I launched the journey because I was like, if I could just offer a membership that, Mm -hmm. and it's $29 a month and I go on there every morning, which is crazy. And now that I've done, like, I don't even know how many, probably a hundred days of the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, Oh, Nat, you really committed to this. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure they did. <laughs> Hello. So I go live every morning at 8am, 8, 8 to 830. Mm-hmm. And it's coaching. So people can ask me questions. Um, sometimes people don't ask. And so then I lead people through like today, we talked about um, real estate investing. You know, last week, we talked about uh, silencing your inner critic. Like, so it's really all over the board. We've talked about, you know, how to grow your business. We've talked about, um, how to get your husband or your partner on board with personal growth, like all types of topics, right? um, Just in the personal professional business growth. And that's for anyone. And it could be someone that has a business, doesn't have a business, just anyone who says, I want to grow as a person, period. I love it. It's very, it's very similar, but just different because mine's more focused on the marketing journey, right? The expedition that we're going on through marketing and yours is all about life, right? I love how it has a nice little play on words there for us, but it's true. And same thing. We have a membership where we start, you know, just minimal costs every month and, or for the year or whatever, just so that way people who can't afford an advertising agency Well, they can still get marketing help and get ideas of things that we're doing for our bigger clients that they just then can have that. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good way too. Cause then now these people who are going through the journey, eventually maybe they can get to a point where they will be able to afford you in two years from now or, you know, later on down the road. So that's great. How many, um, so you said you launched it at the beginning of this year. No, we launched that one. We launched in March. 
Oh, okay. Oh, right. At the beginning of COVID. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm like, everything is like BC before COVID. <laughs> yes, that's right. Before COVID BC. Yeah. yeah BC. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and, and so in your building membership now, do you have a goal of how many members you want to have by like the end of the year? Um, by the end of the year, no, but we do have a goal of, of 1000 members, which is insane. Um, awesome. yeah. Yeah, so we we want that goal by the end of 2021. Gotcha. So okay. Well, hopefully, um, you know, by people listening to this podcast, they'll they'll sign up. So how do they, how do they become members of the journey? Um, they can just go to go natalielemus.com forward slash the journey, and okay. they can sign up. And um, if they want to, I'll give a promo code. If they yeah. want to try it out for a month, they can yeah. put in feel deal heal feel deal heal uh, in the promo and that'll give you 30 days for free and you can try it uh nice. but yeah it's live and the best part is you don't have to be on camera so it's just me on the camera oh, nobody gotcha. else, nobody else. Not oh, gotcha. one want to be on camera but yeah we have 100 members now actually official number is 92 so we're not quite to 100 but i'm just rounding close right yeah <laughs> rounding up sounds yeah, great we're rounding i would round to yeah. 90 mm -hmm. but 92 members um and and growing it's been so cool Okay. So say that again. It's feel, deal, heal. That's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. I'll have to go, I'll have to go sign up for it too. <laughs> I don't know if I can always be there at 8am on Monday, but you have a replay, right? Everything is recorded. Okay. That's Perfect. the cool thing about it. So if you're ever like in there and you're like, cause sometimes we do guided meditations too. So if you're ever like, Oh, I want, I want to hear something on anxiety. You can just search anxiety or, okay, I want to hear something about um, I don't know, time management, mm -hmm. boom. Or I want to learn about, um, you know, energetics and manifestation. Okay. Search boom. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's the cool thing. And they're all saved. And so no matter when you become a member, you get access to all the previous ones. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So and cool what's that? It's a very full library. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. Well, if, if you've done every since March, every single day, then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get more and more. That's awesome, though. Um, so, okay, a couple more questions, and we'll we'll wrap up. But I wanted to know. Um, so, so you kind of talked a little bit. I saw um, about your kind of postpartum after you had your son. And I, I'm not quite sure how this all relates to marketing, but I just wanted to, to point out that you were vulnerable and you shared that story. And I can only imagine how it inspires other people to feel like it's something that other people go through. And so I just wanted to kind of have you touch a little bit about that and just what you did and what made you decide to kind of share a little bit about what you went through. Yeah. So that's interesting because, so Emma who's on my team and, you know, she uh, and I, we collaborate on, on the captions and the feed and everything. And she's like, what do you want to post today? And I was like, well, let's post about Tino school. And then all of a sudden, like, it was just, it wasn't even a, he it wasn't a thought. It was just all of a sudden I was like, I just, she was typing so fast. Like, and I just said the caption, I don't know. It was like crazy. And then I looked at her and I'm like, I'm like, that's a really vulnerable caption. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. She's like, but it's good because it's real. And I was like, I don't think we should post it. <laughs> oh, well, you, you did. I'm so glad you did, though. I think yeah. that it's something that people don't want to talk about or, or recognize that it, it's so real. It happens, right? Oh, and, yeah. you know, for you to share that, I think it will help other people to be inspired that, you know, just to feel normal, that it's something that happens, right? And that other yeah. people can feel the same. Well, and, and I think with marketing, one of the things that that I'm learning because, you know, I just think in marketing, it's just, that's why it's expedition because it's just so much to learn right. constantly. That's probably why you have a membership because you have to otherwise, and it changes all the time. It does. So, you know, people want to relate with a real person. They don't authenticity want, is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Not fake authenticity because then now people are doing this whole like fake vulnerability just for and you can just smell it. At least I can from like a mile away. I'm like, oh, uh huh, Cindy Lou, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't be a Karen. Sorry if you're named Karen and you're not really a Karen, but don't be a Karen. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I posted it and I did get some DMs saying, I got a DM actually today from a guy, a gentleman that oh. said, 
um, I read your, he didn't like the post or oh. comment, but he just uh -huh. said, I read your post and I wanted to thank you for sharing. He said, because my wife really struggled with that too. And she still struggles with anxiety. Wow. And I was like, Whoa, I never, this is like someone I knew in high school. Like I oh. never expected this person to reach out. Um, but I think it just makes your brand real because at the end of the day, we are real people doing business. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I posted it. And right. sometimes I think, oh, will Tino look back and will he be okay with what I posted? And I, I always think about that because um, I just think that that's something that kids have to deal with now that never existed in the past. Right. So. Social media was never a, a thing in, in the past. It, we didn't have this to deal with as, as they do now, but yeah. So. you know, it just reminded me one time you told me a story about your parents um, figuring out Facebook and they, you want to share that? Oh my gosh. I still, I, I'm still <laughs> laughing. You know what I'm talking about, right? What you told well, me. <laughs> well, I think I remember it, but like my parent, I recorded a video and I should have freaking posted it. It would have gone viral, but my parents were, were trying to figure out Facebook. And I think what happened was my dad had shared something that was from like this really inappropriate Facebook page <laughs> that it was like about like, I don't, do you remember what the Facebook page name was? I don't remember. No, but yeah, I can't. <laughs> It had the F word in it. Okay. I know that for sure. And my dad was like 78, you know, and, and, it, and the post was something really like inappropriate and he shared it, but he thought that he had just, I don't remember like what he thought. He, he, yeah. I mean, you know, he's 78, right? He's figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. And then my mom like is scroll, so they're scrolling and then my mom sees it and she's like, Ernie, She's like, you posted this post. This is so inappropriate. And then he was like, what? He's like, are you kidding me? He's like, show me that. Show me that. He's like, I just liked it. I never, I never, what? And then I'm like <laughs> recording it. And then she's like, it's like, it's like a virus. It just goes everywhere. Once you share, everybody can see it. And he's like, did you see it, Natalie? And I like go through my feed and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, are you kidding me? He like lost his mind. <laughs> so it was just really funny. And cause my parents are very like, you know, probably keep their little opinions to themselves, but it was, uh, it was some story about, it was some post. I can't remember. I wish I could know, but it was uh, just some really inappropriate thing. I, I, my grandma, I got her a smartphone about a year ago. Um, cause you know, they still had the flip phones. Right. And so she's, I, I'm her tech support, right? She, oh, yeah, I've got her on Facebook. Now she likes everything I do. Thank yep. you, grandma. <laughs> but yep. yeah, it's just fun to, to, to get them. She's like, well, I just don't know how to send a picture. <laughs> oh, I know. So I've had to show and share. And one time, um, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying that they didn't realize that they were live on Facebook. And cause they, must have hit the Facebook live oh, button. That, I mean, that happened to my dad too. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe that was you, but it was, um, you know, just, they're not figuring out how to get it off and they can't get it off. And they you like, you watch them struggle trying to just get off the Facebook live. Right. <laughs> my dad has hosted multiple watch parties. And I'm like, dad, what are you trying to do? He's like, Oh, I just, I don't know how I hit that. And, yeah. and, he, and he was always saying, Facebook has a virus. He's always oh. saying uh, <laughs> all Facebook's fault. The face page. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been wonderful speaking with you, Natalie. Do you have any kind of last words of wisdoms that you want to share with our audience who are going on this marketing expedition with us and the journey that you have and uh, anything else that you would like to share that can help um, bring people to understand what it is that we're all working towards here. I think my last words of wisdom are just never give up, always press forward and know that take every lesson because there's lessons in everything. And when we can find the lesson, it lessens mm -hmm. the negative emotion of the experience. So look for the lesson always and keep pressing forward. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we will have this posted. We're posting every Thursday now. I, um, getting the, so. Yeah. Okay. Thursday must be a good day for podcasts. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. 
And uh, for those of you listening, thank you. And always um, just a reminder to subscribe and to like, share, recommend, refer, rank, rate, whatever. <laughs> uh, and we appreciate you listening and, and always, always enjoy the journey. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Find more online at peppershock.com. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.